Pope and Nidek Minster welcomes you to this broadcast of OHSAA Girls District Semifinal Basketball Tournament in NK Telco Sports. We're at Wapakoneta High School. The Parkway Panthers take on the Marion Local Flyers. Tonight's game is brought to you by the following sponsors. Crown Equipment Corporation, First National Bank, Keyhole Pizza, Winner's Meats, Sydney Allglaze Audiology, Precision Strip, Wagner's IGA, and NK Telco. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. Along with Jeff Henson, I'm Dave Kanapke. Number two versus five matchup. The Flyers are marrying local against the Panthers of Parkway. And Jeff, it's been an historic year for the Panthers. 16 and eight on the season. First winning season since 96. First sectional title since 1991. It's been a long time. It's overdue and uh, these girls came through and got it done. Beat a very good New Bremen team at Shawnee last weekend to win a sectional titles. I was kidding with Coach Deb Kirby, the assistant coach. When's the last time you won a sectional title? She said, oh, back in the 1900s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it sounds, well, was that the Depression or was that the year I graduated? Uh, it sounds like close year I graduated, which is 87. So long time, long story short, the Parkway, great success story for them under Coach Williamson. His team has come a long way, and these girls deserve the right to be here tonight. And they put up a lot of points and a lot of threes. They average making almost five and a half to six three-pointers a game. They shoot as a team about just under 30 percent so not awful percentage but they're capable of hitting those shots and when they're on fire those come in succession they got a couple of girls definitely to let it fly uh, they do rely on the three-point shooting and they rebound well with Marion their opponent tonight the higher seed the number two seed at Marion local flyers 17 and 6 on this season. Uh, just a good all around solid team led by co player of the year in the MAC, Sammy Holster. Yeah, she does a lot of good things for them. She averages 16 points a game. Had an off night scoring against St. Henry in the sectional finals, but they didn't need her that game. She did some other things well. Other girls picked up her, her, uh, lack of scoring if you will but uh, 16 points a game she can do it she's left-handed she's strong she's fast and she has that mike singletary eyes in her of defense on her uh, intimidating look that she carries so great player and uh, the flyers again very consistent and they've been improving dave throughout the season they're much better now and they played some very good competition as well very tough schedule and these two teams played each other as the last regular season game and they won that game 61 44 that score that was a little bit mislighting. It was it was close until the very end when Marion kind of pulled away. So right now they're going to play the national anthem. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. We had an MAC matchup in the first district semifinal, won by New Knoxville. Played a very good game. They won 54-24 over the Minster Wildcats, who had this won this district six years in a row. So they'll be a new champion this year. So whoever wins this is going to be an all MAC final against New Knoxville. We were talking off air a little bit. It's we're trying to remember the last time a non-MAC team won this district and. I've yet to come up to think about it. You're going to have to do the homework on your own, Dave, and figure that out. But it's been a MAC-dominated district, um, especially since they brought down the district from the north a little bit. So, you know, before, it's just been good run by the either Mary Local, New Knoxville, Minster, Bremen's had some runs in there as well. So it's been MAC-dominated. Yeah. Three officials that were announced, Aaron Braun, Stephen McRae, and Travis 
Unverfirth. They will introduce the coaches here. Both these coaches, coaching staffs have done a nice job. First, they're going to introduce the Parkway coaches, led by Dan Williamson in his third year. He's really turned around this program. Uh, third year at at Parkway. First year, he won nine games, nine, then nine games the second year, now 16. Well, to get it done, staying after it, and uh, a lot of these kids have started playing there at Parkway. He's a fifth and sixth grade, trying to get kids in the gym, and it's good to see them kind of see those rewards. And the, for the coaching staff for the Flyers, led by Beth Strive. Now as they do the non-starters for the Parkway Panthers, we're gonna give you your keys to the game for Parkway, brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. They wanna keep the ball out of the paint against the Flyers, force them to hit down outside shots. They wanna win the battles of the rebounding and turnovers. Pretty simply said, don't give up second shots and don't give up live ball turnovers. And when they get open looks on offense, gotta knock down shots. You can do a lot of things right, but if you don't score the ball, it doesn't put marks on the board, so you gotta knock down those open shots when they present themselves to you. Leading scorer for the Panthers, Gabby Stober, 17 points a game, and she went over 1,000 points in her career. Just a junior in the win over New Bremen. Now, as they do the non-starters for the Flyers, you see head coach there, Beth Scribe, will talk about their keys to the game, also brought to you by Keegle Pizza. Pressure defense, they know how well that can work in your favor, and they want to contain Stover. She's their leading scorer for somebody else to make things happen. Rebounding and good, they keep Hughes off the boards. That's a, a tough ask because Hughes is a good rebounder, long arms, good length, so also good ball movement and be balanced on offense, don't get frustrated, work the ball around, force Parkway to chase you, and look for that good high percentage shot. Again, those are your keys to the game, brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. I will go transition in the Sydney, Sydney Oglays audiology starting lineups by both teams. There'll be alternate starters. They'll start with the visiting Parkway, and they'll First one will be number nine, the only senior on this roster, Danny Huff, 5'5 five, five in height. For the Flyers, number 10, Ava Unross, a 5'6 freshman, runs the show for the Flyers. And next, Gabby Stover averages 17 points a game. That's second in the MAC for the 5'11 junior. Number 12, Stella Hillsman, 5'9 junior, five points a game. Next up, Allison Hughes, a 6'1 junior, 10 and a half points a game and an amazing 16 rebounds a game. Unbelievable. And Olivia Demands, 5'7 senior guard for the Flyers. Number 25, Emery Niddle, 5'8 junior, six points a game. For the Flyers, their leader, Sammy Holster, 16 points a game for the co-player of the year in the match. And their best three-point shooter, 59 threes for Paige Williamson, a 5'7 sophomore. And for the Flyers, number 30, Lindsey Caning, a 5'10 junior, first team all MAC, seven and a half points a game. So two versus five, should be a good one here, Jeff. Yeah, and both these teams have put up a lot of wins. Parkway, 16 wins. Mary Little 17, so 33 victories. And, you know, here we are in the districts, and the good teams are beginning to rise to the top. And, and as you rise to the top, it gets tougher. And uh, both these teams are going to have to play their best to advance to play the Rangers in the, the, the district finals on Saturday. But, you know, Parkway's excited. They've not been here in a while. It's neat to see their enthusiasm. Murray Local, a little bit more used to this, more businesslike. But understand what they need to do to get it done. Don't get me wrong. Tip is controlled by the Parkway Panthers. Gabrielle Stover, great player. Second leading scorer in the MAC at 17 a game, but they got a lot of scores. Niddle with the basketball, Is gives it up. Do? Stover with the tray. Good start. Drains it. Put you on the spot. If she was second in the MAC, who was first? Wiss Miller? Wiss Miller was second, and third was Sammy Holscher. Wiss Miller was first. Stober was second, Holscher was third. Gotcha. Turnaround by Caney, off the mark, and Hughes Another averages rebound. 16 rebounds. You know this, I hope she doesn't take this the wrong way, but wasn't Dennis Rodman number 10? Yeah, I think so. And well, he all he did was rebound. Now, she scores as well, but 
you know, that's, uh, you think of a guy that just got it done being on the right spot, the right place. Allison Hughes, that type of player, length and some good arms, but evidently knows where to go when the shot's up to position herself to get, like you said, 16 rebounds a game. That's, that's a good number. She had 146 more than the second place one in the MAC, and that was Riley Rismiller. But right now, the Panthers with a three point lead in the basketball. Huff trying to get it down to Allison Hughes. Double and triple team, able to move it around to Stober. She'll try another three. This one a little bit too long. Koenig did a nice job of boxing out Hughes. Holscher, who won over 1,000 points against Parkway in the last regular season game, gives it up to Ava Unross. Freshman, she's pretty well the point guard on this team. Turn around by Koenig, that is off the mark. Rebound Paige Williamson. Williamson gives it up to Niddle. Drive to the basket. Hughes was not open and it swatted away. Niddle saw the taller Koenig and kind of panicked and uh, good defense by the Flyers. Holscher shot too long. Battle for the rebound. Holscher came up with it swatted away by Hughes. And it looks like we're gonna have a reach-in foul against the Panthers. Couple looks for the Flyers to keep this possession alive and pick up a foul against Danny Huffer, first team's first. Inbound to be a Libby Demange. Koenig will try her third attempt, that is short. Unross cleans it up, a big basket. Boy, how many offensive rebounds, Dave, in that possession? At least three, you know, so the possession scores, that's the important thing for the Flyers. Williamson breaks the pressure to oh, the hole. I thought there was a little bit of contact. Too strong. Caney comes up with the board. Holscher, ninth flyer to go over 1,000 park point mark. And there's been a lot of good flyer teams and individuals through the years. She's now a member of that club. And she will try a three and drain it. Boy, a straight on three point shot for Holscher. Her 26th three pointer of the season, a 32% shooter from that range. And again, didn't have a great offensive game in her sectional win against St. Henry, but still ran the show, played defense, made things happen for her team to advance. Williamson will drive again. Contact, I think it was blocked as well. Koenig with another rebound already. It's twice she's penetrated Williamson. and. You know, it's one of those things, it's, it's, there's contact, it's just whether or not it's called, was it a lot? I don't know, but there was some contact, Williamson over two in that category, trying to score or draw the foul. Three-pointer shot by Unross, and there's Hughes with the rebound. Stober to the basket, knocked away by Holscher. Two great players there, and it's interesting you if they do in the regular season, they guarded each other the entire game. It's always good to see good players play anytime, but when they play each other, it's always very interesting. Very similar builds, very height. Definitely great players. There's Hughes, will drive to the basket. Demands did a nice job of tying her up, and that'll be a turnover to the Flyers. Molly Winter into the ball game for the Flyers. Dave, number 35, a good score, six points a game, and uh, another good person off the bench. And she's second team MAC, so she got a lot of respect from the MAC coaches to vote her second team, even though she comes off the bench. There's Winter with the basketball to Holscher. Holscher trying to find an opening. Back to Winter. Holscher guarded by Stober. Hillsman, a little off balance shot. Gets her own rebound. Can't finish. Gets another rebound. And Hillsman will be tied up. And this time it'll go to the Panthers. First turnover against the Flyers, but boy, the rebounding for Mary Local has been very good as Ronnebaum comes in for the Flyers. But. Um, Parkway needs to get a body on the Flyers, keep them off the glass. They've given up too many second chances. Ronnebon, freshman, comes off the bench, played all year on varsity, big contributor on a very deep team for Coach Beth Stride. Panthers hit a three on their first possession. It's come up empty since then. Give it to Stober. 
There's Williamson in some trouble again in that lane, able to get the ball back. Shut up by Adria Miller. Rebound Flyers. Holscher gives it up. Unroth swatted away there by Hughes. As the Parkway bench comes alive, as they really cheer that as a couple more possessions. Nora Eckstein and Lindsey Kane get into the game. Marion definitely a deeper bench. Parkway goes six, maybe seven, where Marion goes routinely eight or nine. Yeah, they can really run people in and out, keep pressure on you, not get gassed too much. And Holscher's not going to get gassed. I think she is a runner in the offseason, uh, cross country and such, but uh, for the most part, they can interchange bodies and just keep pressure on you. Holscher gives it up to Kane. Winner trying to post up underneath. Ronenbaum back to Holscher. Holscher trying to spin through the lane in traffic. I think Stober got the block there. Goes out of bounds. And they go to Parkway. Two block shots, one by Hughes, one by Stober in that possession. So it shows you their ability to be good defenders as well. Gabrielle Stober, 25, now make it 26 blocks on a season. Allison Hughes, now 22 blocks. So both those girls average about one block per game, and both have got one here in the first quarter. Two of the higher scoring teams in the MAC, and they are so low scoring games so far. Marion, number one at 49. Parkway third in the MAC at 47, but defense has ruled so far. Stober trying against Holscher. Tough angle, and winner with a rebound. Stober just got run a little bit too much. Good defense by Holscher. Forced her to go too much behind the glass, and just like you said, you saw it, Dave. Tough angle. Turn around by Ronenbaum, the freshman knocks it down. Points off the bench, and that was key. Ronenbaum averages four points a game, and that's a big bucket here in this low-scoring game so far. And that's, again, a mid-range jumper, catch, pop, shoot, hit it, and she did. Middle picks up her dribble and turns it over. Nora Eckstein with the steal. Flyers trying to extend their four-point lead. Coming up on a minute and a half in the quarter. Seven unanswered for the Flyers, Dave, after Stober got the game's first points on a three-pointer. Three-pointer, Holscher. Rebound by Koenig. But seven offensive rebounds here in the quarter. Almost went to the backcourt, but Holscher able to get it as they reset. Ron and Baum. Nice entry pass to winner. Nice touch pass by the freshman, a good finish by the senior, Molly Winter, her first two points. She averages 5.7, as you mentioned, coming off the bench. These two teams played last regular season game. Marion won 61-44. Parkway started out hot and got cold in the second quarter. But right now, they're behind by six, and Hughes double team draws the foul. I think it'll go against Koenig, the double team. Nope, 30. Oh, Molly Winter gets it, her first. First foul against the Flyers. Williamson into the game, number 31 for the Flyers. Stella Hilsman, number 12, in for the Flyers. Williamson in for the Panthers. And she will get the ball. 59 three-pointers on the season for the Southmores. Very under, a lot of underclassmen on this team. Huff is the only senior on the roster. So you're going to hear a lot about this team next year as well. Williamson will shoot it. There's Kaney with another rebound. Holscher back to Kaney, but Kaney did not make it across the timeline yet. Second flyer turnover. You talk about the rebounding. The Flyers have had six defensive rebounds. They've not given up an offensive rebound to the Panthers. Also, the Flyers have seven offensive rebounds, so they've been cleaning the glass on both ends of the court. Miller, Adrian Miller, the first player off the bench for the Panthers. He's in some trouble, and that'll be a travel against Miller. She was getting close to the three-second count as well. Fortunately for Parkway, it's a dead ball turnover. There's sometimes you panic, you, you throw a pass up front, and it gets tipped, and it's one on none going to the other end. Coming up on the last seconds, down to 10 seconds of Marion Benches. Made sure they knew what time it was. It looks like they're going to clear out for Holscher. Guarded by Williamson this time. Gives it up. Hillsman, a three. 
And two. Along two, Stella Hillsman, nonetheless, a big basket is a big quarter for the Flyers. As we go to the second quarter back on our break on our first national scoreboard, Flyers by eight here on NK Toko Sports. Lift your career to new heights with Crown, an innovative global leader in the material handling industry with over a 75 year history of growth and success. We're seeking career minded candidates for a wide variety of entry level and skilled positions in our new Bremen, New Knoxville, Salina, Minster, and other U.S. locations. Visit crown.jobs to apply or find us on social media by searching careers at Crown. Clope Corporation, America's favorite garage door, is now hiring for all manufacturing and over the road Class A CDL driving positions. Clope is the largest residential garage door manufacturer in North America, and we are continuing to grow. Join our team and work in a safe, clean, modern environment. Clope offers a great benefits package as an equal opportunity employer and a drug free work environment. Imagine the possibilities when you open the door to your career at clopay.com slash careers. As we go to the second quarter of this district semifinal, the Flyers up by eight. Well, they shot 16 shots into Flyers. They made four. Not a great percentage, but they had seven offensive rebounds, some of those of which are able to keep possession live and score. And meanwhile, for Parkway, they get a missed shot there by Williamson. They were just one of seven from the floor, and that was an opening three-point shot by Stober. So they've missed now their next eight shots, and they have no offensive rebounds. So it's been one and done, and they've also committed four turnovers in the first quarter. Parkway switched. It looked like a 1-3-1 one, one zone. The Flyers a different look here. Hillsman. Eckstein tried to go underneath. It's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Flyers. Nice move by Hughes. Be getting around. I think it was Koenig that time. Knocking it away, avoiding the foul, and not letting Koenig get the catch and the a high percentage opportunity. See Coach Williams in there standing up. Directing the defense, but it didn't help in the out of bounds play. Right into Koenig. She banks it home. Her first two points. Stober in a hurry. Rebound by Hughes and a good stick back. By Hughes, a much needed basket for the Panthers. First offensive rebound of the game, and it comes after Stober, who again challenged the defense. Didn't get the benefit of a foul, but Hughes there, her classmate, to pick up the, the carom and put it back for her first two points of the game. Hillsman got a little miscommunication there to Unross as that goes out of bounds. As Holscher got a quick break there through the quarter. She returns as well as Molly Winter. You mentioned the Flyers rotate a lot of people, and I mentioned she doesn't miss much time. You notice she sat out during the quarter break. She missed a minute and two seconds. So she doesn't, of the 32 minutes of the game, I'm sure she plays close to 30 in all of them. Yep. Panthers back on the attack. High three by Williamson. <laughs> Demands with the rebound. Gives it up to Unross. Hillsman pull up jumper and knocks it down. Nice ball fake for the junior. She got, I think, Hughes to come out and then went baseline and pulled up off of a dribble for her fourth point of the game. Ten point flyer lead. Williams to the basket. They're going to call a foul on Winner. Say a couple people got her. Winner ended up getting her in the face. I thought maybe someone got her on the arm attacking the basket, but Winner definitely. Committed to foul as well, but she'll get her second foul. Williamson on the line, 50% shooter for on the season. Shoots a lot of threes, so doesn't always get a lot of free throw attempts. Just 16 on the season, making eight of 16, now nine of 17. Second team all MAC as just a sophomore. Played it, started last year as a freshman. Really, it's pretty well the same starting line that they had last year. They were nine and 13. For a while, it looked like they were going to have a winning season last year, and they had a tough stretch. Williamson, one of two there, is a Caney with another board. Well, that starting lineup this year, other than Danny Huff, will be back next year. So they're going to get used to seeing these same nucleus of girls for Coach Williamson, that being his daughter as well. Yep. Holster now with the basketball. Nine point lead for the Flyers. In and out. There by demands, 
Hillsman comes up with it. Hughes clears the boards. She will dribble and hand it off to her classmate, Gabby Stober. Williamson trying to find an opening. Now to Stober, back to Williamson. She's got the three, and she hits it. She does a lot. She tries to penetrate. She's going up the glass a couple times a night, but what's impressive is the catch and the release pretty quick, and she does it at 34% from that range. So again, a lot of time spent in the gym working on that technique. Unross, 15-footer demands. There's another offensive rebound for the Flyers, and demands is be tied up. They'll call a jump ball there. I think Stober was the one who blocked the shot. So that will be a turnover. I believe it goes over to Parkway. Yes, it does. Danny Huff returns in the lineup for the Parkway Panthers. It said the first winning season since 1996. And to be honest, they had a lot of very lean years. Some really, really high uh, losses. losses. Yeah. And so it's really nice to see them have a big season this year. And there's almost a steal, but Holscher comes up with it and she draws a foul. Allison Hughes will pick up her first foul, just the second foul against Parkway. Much like the first game, Dave, we had here, not a lot of fouls in either game. Uh, the Knoxville and Minster game was pretty foul-less friendly, if you will, and here just four fouls total, two for each team as we're a quarter and a half into the game. The man gives it up to Holscher. Work it around the perimeter. They have uh, some nice guards, and that goes into the backcourt. They always seem like they have two post players in the game, too. Good size, mix of grades. It took them a little bit to get that chemistry to mess, but they just keep getting better. That one's off the mark by Hillsman, another board by Allison Hughes. Well, chance here for Parkway, Dave. I believe it was 15 to 5, 10 point lead. They've scored four straight here, and they're down six. You know, they haven't shot real well. They haven't had many offensive opportunities like second chance, but they're, um, you know, bucket away here from cutting it down into about a four or five point game. Huff with the basketball gives it up to Stover. She scored on a three in the first possession. Hasn't had a lot of shots since then. There's Niddle, or no, there was Miller. That was, Niddle. that was Niddle with the shot and a foul on the rebound. That'll be the second foul. But check that, that'll be on Huff. We thought it was on Hughes, but it'll be Danny Huff. Huff does pick up her second foul for the 5-5 senior. Again, Huff is the only senior on the squad. So a lot of youth, but yet veteran youth, if you will, from these girls playing last year and then this year and, you know, trying to extend their season tonight. Holster, a long two. Rebounded another offensive rebound by the Flyers. Ten of them in half. Seven in the first quarter, three offensive rebounds here in the second. Holscher to Hillsman. Drives baseline, has to give it up to Unross. There's Demange with the three. And Williamson comes up with the board. Again, the score stays at 15 to nine. As Flyers have come up empty after having a 15 to five lead, but there's a steal by Hillsman to the bucket and the basket. Good scoop and score by Stella, as that's the first turnover of the quarter for the Panthers, but a big one as, ooh, illegal screen they're gonna call. I didn't see it, but Hughes is gonna get called for illegal screen, her second foul. That's big, second foul. They're probably sick to, well, we'll see what they do here. She will leave, as we mentioned, Coach Williamson doesn't really have the luxury of a deep bench. You can't afford to go without Hughes very long. It might be an offense-defense type thing. We'll see how it plays out the rest of the half. Flyers with an eight-point lead. And a 1-3-1 one, one zone defense. You see that to get hands out on the perimeter. Holscher gets her own rebound and is fouled on the way to the hoop. Well, that offensive rebound following her shot did a nice job. She felt it when she released it. Probably was off and trailed it and got the rebound and got fouled in the act of shooting. Holscher 60% from the foul line on the season. It's that one. She's been playing on varsity since she was a freshman. Always was a very good driver. Seemed like she's really developed her shot, especially her three-point shot this year. And that all makes you a better athlete, and that's why she's co-player in the MAC. 
She's quick and she's strong, so she can go to the basket. She's left-handed too. I think that's a benefit for whatever reason, but uh, she can do the inside, she can do the outside. You mentioned Dave, Hughes comes back in with the Panthers on offense and don't expect maybe see her go out right now on the defense, maybe. And the press causes a turnover. You know, she'll stay in there. I thought maybe they'd get real finite here and take her out on defense, but she didn't sit down long with the two fouls to Hughes and she's back in there. Lead back to 10. Parkway stays in that zone. And Ross to her classmate Ronenbaum to Holscher. Nice pass. Koenig spin move couldn't follow. Rebound Williamson trying to drive the whole way. Bump off the glass. Koenig with the board. Missed opportunity there for the Panthers, or what Park looked like it could be an opportunity, but good defense by the Flyers. Parkway's had a number of drives to the basket. I'm not saying they were fouled or not fouled, but the 50-50 call, whether or not they get called for a foul against the Flyers, not so much tonight. They've, uh, they've gone to the basket, come up empty in most of their trips, like inside the paint. Ron and Baum to Eckstein is back in. There's a three there by Unross. Hughes with the board. Stober guarded by Holscher, brings it up. Kick it in the corner to Williamson. Back to Stober. Huff will try a three. Rebound there by Unross. Coming up on a minute to go. Ronabon to the hoop. Got him blocked. Out think... there and rebound by Miller. I thought the block was it by Miller. I thought Hughes blocked it. She got the she got the okay. rebound and timeout. Coach Williamson a 30 second timeout. I'd like to remind you tonight's game is brought to you by Crown Equipment, First National Bank, Keyhole Pizza, Winners Meats, Sydney All Glaze Audiology, Precision Strip, Wagner's IJ and NK Toco. Follow, reminder to follow WCSM AM 1350 96.7 FM. And they're in an exclusive games on WCSMRadio.com all season long. Your sports leader in Mercer and Allglaze County, WCSM Radio. So Coach Williamson calls a timeout with under a minute to go, 56 seconds to be exact. You see the Marion local bench there, Coach Strive and assistant coach and former head coach, Treva Forkamp, trying to talk about the defense. I think it's a big possession here for both teams to see if you can keep it at 10 if you're Marion or you can get under 10 if you're Parkway. Yeah, Parkway would love to get it in single digits. They haven't shot the ball real well percentage-wise. They've had some turnovers and maybe fortunate, you know, if they can be down by eight, seven, that, that wouldn't be so bad going into halftime. A lot of game left to play. Stober has not got many shots off against Holscher. Yeah, Holscher's been in her face. They've not been able to get her free off any screens when they do. Marion has to kind of collapsed or rotated and. Miller in some trouble, gives it to Stober. We're coming up on 16 seconds to go. Miller to Huff, down to 12 seconds. Tried to lob it, ball goes out of bounds off of Parkway right in front of us. Tough break, that'll be their third turnover of the quarter. Their seventh of the game, and after that long possession, they're going to give Marion Local not only the turnover, but they're still going to give them eight seconds to get a quality shot off. They're going to get it to Holscher. Look to her to take it about the whole way. We're down to six seconds, guarded by Stober. Driving. Low charge. And they charge, as you called it. Good job by number 22, Adria Miller, standing right in Holscher's way. And Holscher kind of made her mind up she was going to go to the basket, and that causes the uh, good charge and a uh, good job by Miller. 1.2 seconds to go for Parkway, see if they can get a shot off. Middle inbound it. Williamson will throw it well short. We go to the halftime break in this two versus five matchup. Number two seeded Flyers lead by 10. We'll be back with our Wagner's IJ stats and recap. Come back with the second half on NK Tokyo Sports. Are you looking for a new career with amazing growth potential? NEDEC Press and Automation is hiring for many positions right now. NEDEC is a global company that is growing with its sights on being a billion dollar company. Machinists, service technicians, human resource personnel, 
IT specialists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and many more. The opportunities abound at Needick Press and Automation. Go to MinsterJobs.com now to get started on your new career with Needick. Hi, I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. At First National Bank, we are working hard to make your life a little easier. With products like Card Valet, an app allowing you to control your cards with real-time notifications, transaction restrictions, and spending limits. The ability to access your money through 55,000 all-point ATMs across the country, surcharge free. Live customer support when you need it. And online and mobile banking, allowing you to gain access to your financial information wherever and whenever you like. First National Bank, making your life a little easier. All Glaze and Sydney Audiology are committed to providing the most advanced and affordable hearing care solutions. Did you know that more and more insurances are offering coverage for hearing needs and that we are the most comprehensive provider in the area? Because we want to serve all in our community, we partner with agencies such as Medicaid, OOD, Sertoma, and most recently the VA, helping our veterans find local solutions to their problems. Don't leave unused benefits on the table this year. Call us today to see if you qualify. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School, this district semifinal. We're at halftime. The Flyers lead by 10 with our Wagner's IJ stats and recap. Here's Mr. Jeff Henson. Well, it was not a great shooting night for either team. Parkway in the first half, 3 of 16. That's just 18%. Included it in that. They were 2 of 7 from beyond the arc. Marion Local, more shots, 27 total, made 8. That's good for 25%. Just one of seven from beyond the arc. Free throw is almost a non-factor. Not many attempts. Look at the rebounds there. 24 of those 24, 11 of those were offensive from Marion Local, so that helped them keep possessions alive and put points on the board. Turnovers about even. There were seven and six. Um, I know Parkway had at least one. There was a live ball turnover. I believe it was Stella Hillsman with a scoop and a score that converted that into easy offense for a quick two, but just a 10-point game. Again, it's kind of like Mary Local has a chance here in the first few minutes to blow this game open. Parkway has a chance to cut right back and get right back in Marion's face and make things real interesting. But Parkway's got to shoot better, and they also have to keep Mary Local off the glass. And if Mary Local can't rebound, they got to start hitting their first attempts, if you will. You know, that was that was one of the keys to the game was for Mary Local was rebounding, keep use off the boards. I don't think Coach Stripe thought that she would be, what was it, 14 more rebounds than yeah. Parkway in the first half. Yeah, and probably of those rebounds from Parkway, Hughes probably does have four or five of them. She had one offensive. Their only offensive rebound in the game was from Allison Hughes that she put right back for points. So it tells you how critical it is it's to keep the Panthers off the boards. That um, was an easy look for the Panthers. and But overall, the Flyers taking care of business on the glass. and. Again, have a chance here to make it real difficult on Parkway with an opening score and a stop and push that double digit lead a little bit deeper into the teens. Parkway has two players with two fouls. That's Hughes and Huff. Only players with two fouls, and they'll call a palming there for the Flyers. First turnover scoring in the game. Paige Williamson with four. Gabby Earl Stober with three and Frank and um, Allison Hughes with two for their nine for Marion Local here, Stella Hilsman with six, Sammy Holscher with five, two apiece from Ronenbaum, Winner, Koenig, and Unrest. Obviously, Parkway's gonna need some more points all the way around. They have a jump ball that will stay with Parkway. I think they're gonna need more from Stober especially. Well, she's had, hit that first three-pointer, you're like, boy, look out, and then her next three-pointer was in and out, I think, and then since then, just two shots, and they've, She's been defended well by Holscher, and when she gets the ball, just not been able to get an opening. Holscher's played pretty well. She's had good help defense when needed, and it's been a real, they really had the hands on Stober as far as keeping her under control. She can burst out in a hurry. Great players averaging 17 a game. Middle drives down, draws the foul. 
She'll pick up the foul against Koenig, and Niddle did a nice job there going into the paint. Maybe what one step too far could have spun, had a wide opening, but uh, nonetheless does pick up a foul against Koenig. All the way out to Huff. A little dangerous as Hillsman almost came up with a steal. Anytime you dance around that half court line, it gets dangerous, but Parkway able to maintain possession. Stober trying to drive on Holscher, has to give it up to Niddle. Stober gets it back, drives to the basket. In the game against Bremen, Stober here, a step back three is in. Nice job there by Danny Huff to just set the screen for her. She banks home a three. In the Bremen game, she was able to get some shots off the dribble, like going to the basket, almost like a layup from like three or four feet away, able to cash in on them. But Got a big opening bucket here for her team. Her second triple of the game now with six points for Stober. Caning to Hillsman in the corner. Tipped around. Hillsman came up with a big bust, big bucket. Stober knocked it away, but right into the hands of Stella Hillsman. And she now has eight points and answers back some points, if you will, following the Stober three, but Parkway. Still leading this quarter three to two as they try to eat into that 10 point halftime deficit. William, Williamson gives it up to Stober. She'll try another three. Throws back iron. Hillsman skies for the rebound and gets some space with the elbows. Holscher up ahead to demand. Can't get the layup a little bit too far underneath. Stober comes up with the rebound and draws a foul. Well, the Flyers had an opportunity there. They beat. Parkway down the court, pass a little bit deep as they gave Demange a tough angle, and then Stober with the rebound, picking up the foul against number 30, number 20, I should say, Demange, who picks up her first foul. Woodson brings it across, guarded by Unross. Freshman and a sophomore. We'll see those two play against each other for a lot of, at least a couple of years. Stober gives it up to Williamson. Niddle. Also had 23s on the season, so she's a three-point threat as well. Williamson gives it up to Niddle. Pass to Hughes. Could not finish. Caney clears the board. Boy, nice pass by Niddle. Good offense. Just tough break. Hughes couldn't cash in. Holster got a little too far and lost her balance. Rebound. We have a no. We, I thought we had a jump ball. They're going to call a foul there. A head official for the official from the top called a foul on Danny Huff, her third. Number three with three. Is Adrian Miller number, well, thought she was coming in, but. Two shot foul. Demand, this has been, we haven't had a lot of foul shots here tonight. No, two for each team. <clears throat> Demand wanted just three seniors on this team. Definitely a team that mixes a lot of grades. Almost all, actually all four grades have been represented here tonight. This is the first one. And solid player over the years. And definitely her season year hits one of two from the line. Full court pressure again, but Williamson has no trouble with that. Pushes it ahead. Miller tries to pass it underneath. And there's a steal by Demanche. Hillsman gives it up to Ronenbaum. To the bucket. Koenig with the rebound. Coach Williamson will call a full timeout. His team's down by 12. We'll be back. You're watching Tournament Basketball on NK Toko Sports. Lift your career to new heights with Crown, an innovative global leader in the material handling industry with over a 75 year history of growth and success. We're seeking career minded candidates for a wide variety of entry level and skilled positions in our new Bremen, New Knoxville, Salina, Minster and other US locations. Visit crown.jobs to apply or find us on social media by searching careers at Crown. Welcome back here to Wapakoneta High School. It was a 10 point game at halftime. Panthers had cut it back a little bit, but now the Flyers and Panthers doubled up 24 12. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Gabrielle Stover got another three pointer to start the half. Just what they asked for, but then a couple of turnovers and a few missed shots. And then Mary Local has capitalized on their offensive opportunities. They've scored 
And they've gotten some offensive rebounds to keep possessions alive. So they've done a lot of things right. So a good timeout by Coach Williamson. You know, you want to make sure things don't get out of control. 12 is still manageable. A lot of time for that type of lead or deficit to come back. We got to start knocking down shots and playing good defense. Trying to set a double screen for Stover. Nice move. Hesitation dribble and draws the foul. That's the type of move that the hesitation, the quickness, and then go at the glass. She had the angle. In this case, she draws a foul against Marion local Sammy Holscher, her second. Stover, the fourth member of the Thousand Point Club at Parkway High School for the girls. She was 1,014 to coming into this game. Next up on the list at number three is Jenny Carr at 1,022. And then the Hunsinger girls, Joy Hunsinger at 1061. And then Beth Hunsinger, 1547. That's number eight all time in all the Mac schools. Are those girls sisters? I mean, I'm pretty not, sure. Not twins? They were different age groups? I think so. Different age group, probably? Yes. Okay. But so Stober, one of two on the free throws. She's up to seven now. Hillspin. Ronabon with an offensive rebound, puts up a shot. Rebound there is Hughes. She will be tied up. And it'll be Flyer basketball. Underneath the basket here is Ronabon will inbound it. Another extended possession. This will probably be the third shot attempt. Hillsman had one, Ronabon had one, Holscher's gonna score. Holscher won at that ball underneath. She was posting up Stober and had just enough. Yeah, there wasn't, she wasn't much room. She snuck it right in there and Stober, as a shot blocker, was able to get around her and get it in for a bucket. Hughes had a rebound, couldn't put it in. Gets tied up and will stay on the Parkway side. And this is Parkway's first winning season since 1996. First appearance at District since 1991. So good year. But they wanted to make it even better here. Right now find themselves down by 13. Stober step back. Could not get quite enough as she's guarded right now by Hillsman. Trying to drive spin move. Hughes. Will be fouled, and Allison Hughes, 6'1 junior, will shoot two. She's had a probably getting close to 10 rebounds. I've heard you say rebound Hughes, rebound Hughes, yeah. and I don't keep them individuals, but yeah. I mentioned before the last time the Parkway appeared in the district final, it was in the district was in 1991. That was against Fort Recovery. Star player in Fort Recovery that year was a person by the name of Lynn, Lynn Ben, who's mom. now Lynn Hughes, mother uh, of the Allison Hughes. So the oh, ties nice. there. Yeah. So that's the last time Parkway was in it, and they were in playing against Fort Recovery. Okay. Yep. Against Allison's mother. They won the state. They won the year. state back to back years, 90 and 91. She was all state. She scored 44 points. Lynn Ben Hughes scored 44 in the state final. Started Xavier. Stick back by Koenig. There's the younger Hughes with the rebound. Parkway in a hurry. Williamson to the basket. Couldn't get it to fall. That will go out of bounds. Boy, you mentioned Jeff. They've had a lot of drives, but just haven't. Yeah, they. Williamson has really done a nice job. You know, she's a three-point shooter, but she's going to the basket tonight. She's hit, She's taken some shots here. One, two, three, four, five, six two-pointers she's missed. And I'm betting you all six of them were shots like that, going to the basket, driving in, trying to create between uh, two defenders. Just has not had the good fortune to have any of those shots drop. And, you know, any of those drop maybe makes this game a little bit tighter right now. Currently it's a 12-point flyer lead. Ronenbaum drives, gives it up to Holscher. Flyers with a 12-point lead. Ronenbaum's brother, Brady, had a nice night for the boys' team last night. Hit six three-pointers in the game against New Knoxville. Hughes boxes out Koenig there. And there is a steal by Holscher. Pull-up jumper and in. Points off turnovers. That wasn't a fast break, but Parkway had the ball and then turned it over. And instantly, Holscher, the recipient of a quality shot, and makes her ninth point of the game. Williamson gives it up to Miller in and out on the three. 
Foul on the rebound. It'll be Marion basketball on the common foul. Emery Niddle called for the foul. Yeah, tough point now for the Panthers. They trail by 14 under two minutes to go third quarter. And, you know, they've, they've had some shots. They just are not shooting at a high percentage. Just a couple turnovers here in a quarter. So it's just been the inability to get the ball in the basket so far tonight. And Mary Local has been a little bit more efficient at it. Not a great percentage, but they've been scoring their possessions, basically coming off those offensive rebounds, giving them extended multiple looks. Eckstein to Caney. Shot, shot, shot up. Well defended. Hughes, and there is a foul on Holster. She got a little too close to Stober. That'll be her third foul, so as quickly she's going to come out of the game as Enros is being tapped on the shoulder by Coach Beth Stride. Very successful run for Coach Stride. At her alma mater in her seventh year. Won her 100th game in her coaching career against Parkway. Yeah, the last game of the season, same night that uh, Holscher won over 1,000 points. You mentioned 1,000 points. I know you keep track of that. There was a number of girls recently around here, but I can think of four, correct? Gable went over 1,000. Holscher went over 1,000. Stober went over 1,000. Caden Slusher went over 1,000 in the boys' The boys, side. okay. I don't think there's another girl, girl. that I'm aware of. As we're rattling all these 1,000-point clubs off, I'm thinking, boy, there's a, a lot of them we're seeing we're seeing them all play tonight. Yes. Three of them. Well, three of them are here tonight. Yep. You know, so just kind of neat that, uh, and, and Stober just a junior, so she's going to add to that a mark, but. Uh, it's not as easy as people say, oh, it's a thousand. Well, you got to play a lot early. And that will go out of bounds. Yeah, off of uh, Niddle, she pokes it away, and uh, the 50-50 ball just didn't bounce the right way for, for Niddle to get it and take advantage of it. Instead, she had to dive, and in doing so, knocks it out of bounds. Of course, you'll have the boys' district will be here as well as at Wapakoneta. So we have the games tomorrow at Coldwater. It'll be New Bremen, the number one seed against number eight, St. Henry. And then Marion, number four seed, will play their rival, Minster Wildcats. Shot lights out last night with 14 threes. Yeah, good percentage, 14 of 27, 14 of 28. I mean, that's... That's 50%. That's going to beat a lot of teams when you do that. On a team that usually doesn't make that much shooting, they were hot against a Ridgemont team that was down one of their best players. Three-pointer by Demange. Hughes with the rebound. We go to the fourth quarter on our first National Bank scoreboard. The Flyers lead by 14. We're back with the fourth quarter here on NK Toko Sports. Clope Corporation, America's favorite garage door, is now hiring for all manufacturing and over-the-road Class A CDL driving positions. Clope is the largest residential garage door manufacturer in North America, and we are continuing to grow. Join our team and work in a safe, clean, modern environment. Clope offers a great benefits package as an equal opportunity employer and a drug-free work environment. Imagine the possibilities when you open the door to your career at clopecom careers. Take a look at the Mary Local bench there, huddled around Coach Drive, feeling pretty good. Still work to be done with the eight minutes left, but they lead by 14 over Parkway. Well, the offense hasn't been explosive for Mary Local, but their defensive end has really been impressive. They only they outscore Mary uh, that Mary Local outscores Parkway nine to five in a quarter. And they continue to do it with great defense. Parkway just one of eight in that quarter. A three-pointer by Stober, I think the first shot of the half. And then they missed their next seven field goals. It did hit two of four from the free throw line to the Panthers in that quarter. Marion Local, four of 14, so not a great percentage again. But they again pulled on five offensive rebounds and, and continued those possessions to help them score points. And, uh, you know, just the defense has been better than the offense tonight for the Panthers, the Marion defense, that is. That's your Wagner's IJ stats and recap. After three quarters, it was 10 points. Halftime lead for the Flyers. They stretched it to 14. Holscher trying to get open on against this zone. Turnaround by Hillsman. And that will go off of black, the referee says, and it will stay with the white. Another look here off the missed shot. I think it was partially blocked. It was Hillsman with a shot. Not for sure who got a hand on it. 
Demange all the way in the top, and Stober comes up with a steal. Gabby Stober to the hoop, blocked there by Holscher. Boy, Lindros was hit. Winner with a nice catch and stop for the basket. Well, that was a heck of a play by Molly Winter. Had to really stop to avoid getting stuck under the bank board. She gathered herself, collected, and is able to still have a nice angle, if you will, to score her fourth point of the game. 30 to 14. Stober let the three go, and this time she couldn't get the bank in the roll. Battle goes out of bounds and stay with Parkway. Everything difficult for the Panthers tonight. Stober, a straight on three, high arching thing. And, you know, everything but go in for her as uh, scoring has been very difficult for the Panthers tonight. The team that averages 47 points a game, shot by Hughes, falls in. They average 47, Marion averages 49, but the defense has been better than the offense for both teams. 6.30 to go for a chance to play New Knoxville in the state, or not the state, the district final. And hopefully after that, someone will be going to state, but a lot of basketball to be played. Holscher flashed open there, draws the foul. That goes against Allison Hughes, her third. Talked about Holscher and Stober, looked at the MAC final stats that Rob Hemmigarn puts together for the MAC. Sammy Holscher was in the top 10 of eight different categories. Stober was in six different categories. You know, you often talk about the scoring, but there's so much more to the game of basketball, and that just shows how well-rounded both of those are. Yeah, and the coaches recognize that, and uh, you know, it's not all about scoring. A lot of times that helps, but they see the stats and numbers, they watch the games, they think about it times they watch film scouting, so they see the players in those games, if you will, then what they did against you. So, you know, those are nice honors to achieve that nice, recognition. Nice steal there by Unross to catch it and throw it back before she went out of bounds. Nice play by the freshman. Yes, the 50-50 ball, the throw in back out of kind of just over her shoulder, lands right in her, her teammate's arm. So turnover against the Parkway Panthers as a 50 -50, the 50-50 ball goes in favor of the Flyers. Try to do it underneath and it tipped out of bounds right to Jeff. Good catch there, Jeff. Good hands, yet. Luckily, it was right at me. Didn't have to move much. About poked myself in the face with my pen, but. Right next to Olivia Demands as she inbounds it. Holster will kick it out back to Demands. Flyers still have the Panthers doubled up. Owen Ross. Underneath, nice tip away there by Hughes. I thought Winter had some good post spacing, if you will, but Hughes, a lot of foot quickness, able to dance around Winter. And good thing she did, if she doesn't and Winter catches, it's probably a two-point bucket for Winter. Williamson is Panthers down by 16. Need about maximize about every possession. He's 5.25 to go in this ball game. Miller up to Hughes. Miller comes up with the rebound, knocked out of bounds by Holscher. That was a nice look there. I believe it was 22. Miller maybe got Hughes a nice bounce pass. Allison's bucket didn't go down, but uh, those are the quick scores he needed to get at. There's a nice step through and rolls off. Couldn't catch a break. Nettle. Battling there and they have a jump ball will stay with Parkway. Well, this will be the third look at it. Hughes has had two looks at the bucket, unable to score. Coach Williamson will take a full timeout. Full timeout, Parkway. Gives us an opportunity to let you know our five-star recruitment sponsors, Crown Equipment. MVP sponsors are Ant Clope and Nedeck Minster. Keys to the game are brought to you by Keyhole Pizza Newport. Winners Meets and Osgooders, our replay sponsors, starting lineups sponsored by Sydney Allglaze Audiology. Our timeouts like this one brought to you by Precision Strip. Our stats and recap, our sponsor is Wagner's IGA. Jeff and I will pick a player of the game by sponsored by NK Telco. We really thank all these sponsors for stepping up for tournament trail all season long to make these games possible. 
Jeff and I and all the rest of our announcers get front row seats and hopefully you out there watching it live or replays get a chance to watch a lot of good high school basketball and on our first National Bank scoreboard the Flyers still doubling up the Panthers 32-16. Yep, the defense continues to be very steady for the Flyers. They give up nine points in the first quarter, first half. They've given up seven here so far with five minutes to play, and they've really made any threat of the Panthers comeback really non-existent. And Stober hit the opening three of the half, and you think, okay, here we go, Panthers. But really since then, they've not been able to muster anything kind of in consecutive possessions to uh, get into that lead, and Mary's done a nice job Enough on offense to grow it now to 16. Stober with the three. Hughes with another rebound back to Stober to the hole. Gabrielle Stober will shoot two. I think this will be their fourth attempt to score. Hughes missed two shots in the interior, then Stober missed the three pointer. Another Hughes rebound. And then now Stober gets fouled. So, and offensive rebounds are all well and good, but if you don't score off of them, they don't really help you unless you draw a foul or something to that. It's Stober. Yep, that, that's, this is points off rebounds. What I consider, I mean, it's the possession. Marion's not had the ball yet. It's been four shots by the Flyers, three shots, I should say, and then they get fouled in the fourth, so they do come away with points. It took some time, and that becomes the next enemy, Dave. It's not so much Marion's defense, which is a problem, but there's just not much time left, so if you're going to make a heroic comeback, you need to do it here in a hurry. Get a stop and then get a bucket quickly and uh, get a turnover. So that's a start now. Is there enough, if you will, for a storybook ending here for the underdog Cinderella team, Parkway Panthers? And I mean that in a good way with the down years they've had. They've, yep. they've got a great opportunity tonight and uh, well-deserved. So can they make a run? Yeah, two years ago, the Parkway Panthers won the district there, won their next game in regionals before COVID shut it down. A nice play by Stober. The boys, that is. The boys, that yes. is, yes. yes. Yep, never got a chance to finish, right? They were going to play Columbus Grove in the regional final before everybody knows that COVID shut everything down. Coach Stribe will call a timeout. Be a 30-second timeout. Gives us a chance to remind you, NK Telco Sports and its sponsors are pleased to bring you replays. Tonight's high school basketball tournament on NK Telco Channel 3 or in HD on channel 503. Replay times are Thursday, March 3rd at 7, and Sunday, March 6th at 1 p.m. You can also watch more games on demand through YouTube, Facebook, and at nktoko.com slash sports after both tournament teams have finished their tournament runs. If you didn't catch that schedule, you can always go on our website and check the replay times of this and all the games. You can look back at some of the older ones as we have a, some buzzing, humming sound from the speakers here and uh, looks like they have got it under control right now. Well, big possession here for Coach Strive and her Flyers. I mean, Parkway's outscored now six to four. They're down to 12. They get a stop here. They have a chance to get to single digits with half of a quarter to play. Holscher was on the bench in their last possession. She stayed on the bench through the timeout in this possession at least. She has three fouls, so they're still protecting her I wouldn't think for too much longer as there's another turnover. Williamson drives, puts up a shot. Rebound there by Unross to Ronenbaum to the hole, and the freshman Chloe Ronenbaum will shoot two. Well, what is a tale of two possessions? Again, Williamson going to the basket the other end. A left-handed shot on the left side. Challenge, couldn't get to drop. Ronenbaum in transition. Gets fouled in the act of shooting, so she'll still have a chance to score and knocks down the first free throw. This is a Flyer team that started out the season two and three. Then they won nine in a row. Then their only losses the rest of the way were to St. Mary's, who's still playing, a very good team. Fort Laramie, who they played very tough. And then New Bremen, I think they lost in triple overtime. Yeah, that was a Sunday afternoon makeup game. Triple overtime, lost like 75 to 69. Big bucket there, big free throws by Chloe Ronenbaum to put points on the board. Hughes to the basket. And one. And one, exactly. Another thing in Parkway maximizing their possessions here is Hughes' chance of the old fashioned three point play. Well, these are big points. Again, there's not much time left, but it's not out of the reach. They've wow. done a much better job scoring the basketball here in the first four minutes of the fourth quarter than they've done all game. 
Not able to cash in there. Kenny, who's had a lot of rebounds herself tonight, comes up with another one. Holscher back in the lineup. She might have travel. Yep. Well, she shuffled her feet. That's the fifth turnover of the fourth quarter. Pressure kind of rattling the Flyers, and well, Sammy Holscher did come back in. I missed that, Dave. Or she's on the court now. She was for that possession as well. She came in when Ron oh. Obama was shooting her free gotcha. throws. So another chance here for the Panthers. Down by 12. Need a bucket here. Williamson. And Willard Niddle. Number four. Let her go at it. Stober guarded by Hillsman. Tried to do a step back three. Williamson to the hoop. Knocked out of bounds. Will stay with the Panthers with 3.02 to go. Again for Williamson. You think of her three point shooting. 59 makes on the season. She had made one in the second quarter. So she's at 60. But she's done the damage if you will. Going at the basket tonight. Now she hasn't been able to get the shots to drop. But she's created a lot of opportunities. And there's a steal by Holscher. Sammy, a Euro step in the basket. That might be the Dagger. end of the story for the Cinderella comeback or any type of major comeback here with limited time left. Stober drives through. She only had three at halftime. She's had 10 here in the second half. Six here in a quarter. And still, they need a big stop here is what they need in a hurry. Or some missed free throws if they foul. Oh, Niddle nearly came up with a steal. It'll stay with Flyer basketball. And the Panthers only have four team fouls. If they want Park, if they want Mary Local to go to the line, they've got to foul quickly. Yeah, that's a disadvantage when you have a, had so few fouls. Underneath Eckstein, who just checked in, Ronnebaum. And you may say, well, it took you this most of the game to score 16 points, but. Here, as of late, they put some points on the board. I mean, they came into the quarter with 14. They've got 10 here, and they've scored, it seems like, much more consistently here in the last three, four possessions. Kenny to Holscher. Coming up on two minutes to go. So, Flyers do not need to shoot. They just need to keep control of the basketball with a 12-point lead. There's a foul. Now, of all things, now that'll be Hughes picks up her fourth foul. So you, I just you know, wonder who you want to foul. They maybe should have fouled earlier or someone else that doesn't have foul trouble. Hughes now has four. So you'd like to keep her in the ball game, but I'd go at it and foul him a couple more times, force the Flyers to go to the line. They're 61%, I'm sorry, they're a 63% shooting free throw team on a season, so not great numbers. Doesn't matter what the percentage are, Dave, as you always say, doesn't matter what they are until you make the shots in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it, during the season, you can't compare a district game compared to a Saturday afternoon game uh, what, that you're up by 30, you know? Because that's knocked out of bounds is Parkway. Intense pressure, scrambling to try to stay live here. Parkway has two timeouts left, I believe. We'll see once, you know, if they come into some quick scoring opportunities, but uh, got a foul quickly and they can't, you don't want Hughes to do it. There's Ron and Baum. And she will be fouled. That will be the seventh foul. I think Coach Williamson was yelling for fouls. This is amazing. When you when you want someone to foul, you can't get it. And then when you don't want them to foul, they seem to commit to foul. But that will, maybe I was off by one. That will put the Flyers in the bonus here with Chloe Ronnebaum, who's on the season a 73% free throw shooter. She was two for two, now two for three in the game. So still a chance for the Panthers. Need to score quick. Very quick. Three preferably. I'd find the corner is to score. Niddle underneath. Hughes could not get it to fall. And there'll be a foul, and the Flyers will be shooting the free throw the other way. Foul on number 22, Adria Miller, her second. After the first quarter, it was Marion leading 11 to 3. At halftime, it was 19 to 9 in favor of the Flyers. 28 to 14 in this coming into the fourth quarter. It's Nora Eckstein will shoot the one and one. So, missed free throw again in Williamson trying to dribble through traffic. I'd let that four of 31 just go to the basket. Get a shot off a dribble, maybe draw a foul, step back three would not be bad. Stober hits the tray. Coach Williamson calls a timeout. There'll be a full timeout. We'll step aside. You're watching Tournament Basketball on NK Toko Sports.
Are you looking for a new career with amazing growth potential? Nedec Press and Automation is hiring for many positions right now. Nedec is a global company that is growing with its sights on being a billion dollar company. Machinists, service technicians, human resource personnel, IT specialists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and many more. The opportunities abound at Nedec Press and Automation. Go to minsterjobs.com now to get started on your new career with Nedec. Coming out of this precision strip timeout, you see the Marion Local Huddle Parkway with the timeout, still scrambling, trying to find a way down by nine. Well, they've really put some, together some nice scoring opportunities. It, you know, I don't know what it is. The shots are going in now, and the Stober has come alive here in the fourth quarter with two, four, six, nine points, and that last one, a step back three, and they've got to get a stop here or miss free throws. Like I said, for, um, for Marion Local, they're not a great free throw shooting team, or percentages would say, but, and they've missed some here in the fourth quarter, but Parkway can't waste a lot of time. I'd, and Hughes, you don't want her to foul. Oh, that's on Stober. Too far away. So Stober, her first foul. Sammy Holscher will go the line. 60% free throw shooter is Hol Holscher on the season. And not saying that's awful, but that's probably one area of anything that she's under average at is the free throw shooting percentage. But to some big ones here. It's the last bonus opportunity as it's a ninth foul against Parkway. Good answer there by Holscher. Great rotation on that basketball and nothing but nylon in the center of the net. Gives the Flyers a 10 point lead with 107 to go. Holscher with 14 points in the game. That rattled in and out. Miller comes up with a rebound. Give to four or 31 to let him go to the basket. Get a four pick. Four with it. Tried to go down to Hughes. Holscher comes up with it. Passes it ahead to Hillsman. Hillsman will be fouled. The junior Stella Hillsman off the steal by Holscher will shoot two. Hillsman on the night eight points. She's had six in the first half and then uh, two points in the third quarter for eight. These will be her first free throw attempts of the game. 66% shooter and again the, the free throw shooting has uh, Left the door open, although what the door is going to be shut here in 53 seconds. That's the most important tail of the tape. It's probably not going to hurt them, but if they come, they stay here on Saturday, they probably will not. They'll need these free throws down this stretch. It's, Hillsman misses a pair. Hughes gives it up. Yeah, if you're to going middle. to have a bad free throw shooting game, obviously you had them have one when you're ahead and probably going to win as another attempt there by Williamson comes up short. Pass ahead, Hillsman, stop, pop, and bank it home. Stella Hillsman in double figures with 10. Williamson, this time from the right side, can't get it to fall. Hillsman with the rebound, and Stella will be fouled. Boy, Paige Williamson has done everything she can tonight. The little firecracker, you know, gets to the basket, and uh, She's been challenged when you have shot blockers and Koenig and Winter and taller players that she's gone against. Those 50-50 balls, those shots that you see professionals make all the time. Of course, key word professionals that do this for a living, but she's not gotten any breaks, if you will, in that category. Stella well, Hillsman is the free throw. Danny Huff, only senior on this team. Back on the floor for Unfortunately, the end of her playing career at Parkway High School. Hughes with another board. There's Stober. She's had 16 overall after a quiet first half. She'll shoot again. And she'll hit again. Coach Williamson will take another timeout, a 30-second timeout. And right now, 12.8 seconds to go. Marion in control. They'll have a rematch with New Knoxville. They played them very early in the season, back on December 2nd. They lost that game 43-38, and they're only their fifth game. What I understand, they had a lead late in that game. The Rangers came from behind to pull it out. Yeah, for New Knoxville, it was their second game of the year following the missed games rescheduled due to their volleyball championship tournament run. But New Knoxville came back. It was a close game throughout, but uh, Marion had a lead late. I think it was a five point lead with maybe two and a half, three minutes to go and New Knoxville came back and uh, 
earned the, the big Mac victory that time. That was the first league game for each team. And Nix Oxford was not playing without with was playing without Carson Henschen, who was injured in that game. Marion was just trying to find themselves. Yes. So both teams have improved and yeah, Carson throw. wasn't injured in the game, but yes. she had missed the first eight games of the season with right, an injury. Right. Didn't play, but yeah, both teams, I mean, it's a number, it's a result. It's gonna be um, it means really nothing comes Saturday night. Except, you know, just show up to play. Final score here, the Marion Local Flyers advance to the district final with a 40 to 30 win over the Parkway Panthers. They will play New Knoxville on Saturday. We'll be here for that game as well. we'll be right now we'll come back and wrap it up here on NK Toko Sports. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. Wegner's IGA have been servicing their communities for more than 90 years, spanning three generations. Wegner's founded their business on two basic principles, excellent customer service and quality products. Visit all our locations and experience the finest selection of deli, fresh meats, and a variety of beverage choices. While there, don't forget to check out our vast selection of fresh coffee beans, produce, dairy, and bakery items. Visit Wegner's today in Minster, Fort Laramie, and New Bremen. as we construct a new fiber broadband service in your area. We know that along with this process comes disruption in the easements and right-of-way areas, and we are restoring most areas as we complete them. A few areas will have some utility work installed, so we need to wait for the work to be completed before the lawns can be repaired. We're very close to having the fiber or coax drops cleaned up and replaced with fiber optic drops. Hang in there just a little longer, and we'll have a majority of the new fiber system installed. Lift your career to new heights with Crown, an innovative global leader in the material handling industry with over a 75 year history of growth and success. We're seeking career minded candidates for a wide variety of entry level and skilled positions in our new Bremen, New Knoxville, Salina, Minster and other US locations. Visit crown.jobs to apply or find us on social media by searching careers at Crown. Clope Corporation, America's favorite garage door, is now hiring for all manufacturing and over-the-road Class A CDL driving positions. Clope is the largest residential garage door manufacturer in North America, and we are continuing to grow. Join our team and work in a safe, clean, modern environment. Clope offers a great benefits package as an equal opportunity employer and a drug-free work environment. Imagine the possibilities when you open the door to your career at clopay.com careers. Are you looking for a new career with amazing growth potential? NEDEC Press and Automation is hiring for many positions right now. NEDEC is a global company that is growing with its sights on being a billion dollar company. Machinists, service technicians, human resource personnel, IT specialists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and many more. The opportunities abound at NEDEC Press and Automation. Go to MinsterJobs.com now to get started on your new career with NEDEC. Welcome back to a now empty, near empty Wapakoneta High School Gymnasium, which saw the Marion Local Flyers prevail over the Parkway Panthers. With our final Wagner's IGA stats and recap, here's Jeff. Thank you, Dave. As a defense for the Flyers, just too much tonight for the Panthers to overcome. Parkway 10 of 39 overall. That's 25% from the field. Just not good enough. Although they did hit 5 of 14 
from three point range. Not a bad percentage there. Mary Loco, 15 of 45, a little bit better percentage at 33%. They connected on just one of nine three point shots. Free throw shooting, Parkway five of nine. Mary Local 9 of 16. The rebounding margin belongs in favor of the Flyers. 34 to 27 of those 34 rebounds. 17 of them. Half of them were offensive. And the turnover battle or margin there, each team with 13 turnovers. But uh, a little bit better shooting for the Flyers. Really the key stat in the game is it just came down to making shots and Give credit to Parkway. They only had 14 points going into the fourth quarter, and Marion Local did not, let's say, empty their bench. They scored 16 points. The Panthers did in the fourth quarter. Much of that coming at the hands of Stober, who, who hit um, two, four, six, 12 points in the fourth quarter in a losing effort. But their offense came alive, just ran out of time, and Marion Local just consistent, you know, throughout the rest of the game to kind of have a big lead and could manage it and just held on, made enough free throws down the stretch and came up with some good defense to hold on for the 10 point 40 to 30 victory. Parkway Panthers end their season, great season 16 and nine. Overall, we'd like to recognize their only senior Danny Huff. Congratulations, Danny, on your, your basketball career and wish you the best of luck the rest of the way. But you'll be hearing a lot of these Panthers as we go along the next year and beyond. For the Flyers, they go to 18 and six on the season, they will face 23 and 2, New Knoxville on Saturday night. It's going to be another battle here. A lot of teams like to play the good defense, and they'll come down to making shots against a hand in your face atmosphere. You know, don't expect a lot of easy looks, and both teams know each other pretty well, and it'll be a good battle. And, uh, you know, someone from the Mac's going to move on, and we, you know, someone's going to go home, though, with a season ending L. That's the sad part of it, but uh, should be a good one, and good night tonight for uh, the Mary Local Flyers. Congratulations to them. Congratulations. Oh, well, when we're I, out of business, we almost well, forgot our player of the game, our, our individual scoring. Yep, individual scoring. Stober, game high honors with 19 for Parkway, six from Allison Hughes, four from Paige Williamson for their total of 30. I'm missing one somewhere, but um, we'll go on. And for Marion Local, they play, they had a number of girls scoring. Sammy Holzer, 14 points. Stella Hillsman with 11. Four from these three ladies, Lindsey Koenig, Molly Winter and Chloe Ronnenbaum, and then two points from Ava Unras, their total of 40. Our player of the game sponsored by NK Telco Sports, Junior Stella Hilsman. She was consistent. I know she had a score on a steal that she went in for a bucket to help them. She was consistent throughout the night and uh, did enough for them on offense and also on defense to help control and keep the Parkway offense in check tonight and congratulations to Stella Hills men our NK Telco player of the game. Congratulations to Stella, congratulations to your team the Flyers as they prevail 40 to 30. For NK Telco Sports Crew, Director Scott Hillsman assisted by Bryce Hamrick on camera Kirk Kuffner for my partner Jeff Henson. I'm Dave Kanapke. Thanks for watching on NK Telco Sports.